to our YouTube channel and welcome to today's video. Um, today we are going to be doing a quick uh, workshop on collecting for beginners. We're going to be focusing on what to look out for when buying pickle halves because we've bought a lot of them recently. We are going to be talking about one specific group uh, related to Arnhem, seeing as we've just passed the anniversary and we'll be talking about the potential banning of ivory in the UK and uh, my recent appearance on combat dealers so start from the beginning if you are a um, long-term collector you've been doing this a long time or potentially a dealer you might want to just fast forward this because I, I've had a lot of requests from people who really just want to talk about the basics of how to get into collecting and the the, the most important thing with starting off collecting, you know, you've got to understand is a lot of people, they, they have no idea, they just like the subject, but they've not experienced buying um, this kind of stuff before. And the most frustrating thing for me as a, as a dealer is seeing people buy one or two things, get their fingers burnt, and then they leave the hobby for good, and we've lost another collector in the community. So the most important rule when buying military or starting out as a new collector is, is to find yourself a trusted dealer or person and stick with that person and trust their their judgment now the way there's certain ways to find a, a good trusted dealer they have to have been doing this for a long time we've been doing this 40 years and quite often people say to me how do I know it's real my, my standard answer is always Look, we've been doing this 40 years, I mean, not me personally, but my, my company's been doing this 40 years. You do not survive for 40 years in this business by selling reproductions, you know? If we're selling a reproduction, it will be marked as, as a reproduction. We also give a 14 day money back guarantee. We guarantee our items by saying we will buy it back at any time. You know, we're VAT tax registered. If you buy your items from people who are not as established as us, you know, you're running the risk of not having any um, ability to go back to them when there's a problem. So find yourself a trusted dealer, um, trust, work with them, build, build a relationship, talk to them, get advice from them. Uh, I've got customers calling me all the time and I just, I'm really at the moment trying to push um, young collectors and trying to help young new people come into it because, you know, I, I want this to carry on for me and, and my family's future. So. It's really, really important to protect new collectors. So when you're starting out buying stuff, um, don't fall for stories. Uh, people like to tell you it was found in a barn or brought back by a veteran. Let me tell you, in all honesty, I would say 90% of our items that we sell is being circulated within the collecting community or the dealer community. Very, very rarely do we have items that are straight from veterans or veterans' families. So don't fall for the stories. Buy the item on its own merit. Look at that item and just buy that item. If there's a story with it, then that's great, but take it with a pinch of salt. The other thing is, is that don't ever think that you can beat the dealer in terms of finding a bargain. People, we've noticed a pattern at shows. We go to a show, we set up our stall, we have a very quiet period at the start of the show because people are walking around the show trying to find a bargain. Usually, by the end of the show, they come back to our table, they realise that we have the good quality items and they settle for the fact that sometimes you have to just pay that little bit more to find a real, perfectly nice, honest item. You know, you are never ever going to find a bargain. It's very, very rare to find a bargain when collecting this. So don't think that you're smarter than the dealer and you can go out and you can find items at dealer prices. It takes a long, long time to be in that position where you can find stuff at a price where, where you're able to sell it on. Another thing that um, new collectors fall into the trap of is uh, taking advice off of internet forums. Now, f forums have, have had many, many pluses. It's a good way to um, get, get, get information or gather information to network with people, but it, it can be a minefield if you're being misled by someone who has no experience of being out there handling stuff. I've come across hundreds and hundreds of people who are collectors from behind their computer screen. They never get out there in the field and actually see the items and they have an opinion of what's real but really they have no experience. So just be wary of um, so-called experts on forums. Don't, don't, you know, there are experts on forums but don't assume that everyone who's on a forum is an expert. 
I wanted to talk about buying pickle hogs, mostly because I like them and, and it's something that we bought recently. So for new collectors, I wanted to just talk about the things to spot, the, the, the real basic things to spot with, with, with pickle hogs. The most common thing is, is where people have rebuilt a pickle hog. So many pickle hogs are found in pieces. They're stripped after the war and you find um, bare shells with, with no plate, no cockades, no chin straps. So then unscrupulous people in the past have tried to rebuild them to create a very sellable item. So the most common thing you see is, is plates put onto pickle hogs that have not always been there. And the, it, it, the easiest way to spot a replaced um, front plate is by looking at the holes on the back where the lugs are poked through the, the shell of the helmet so it would be virtually impossible for people to find a helmet plate that fits exactly onto a helmet shell where the lugs were so one option is to move the lugs on the back of the helmet move them to a different location uh, resolder them um, but the most common one uh, people just make extra holes in the back of the you know in, in the helmet plate so I'm going to remove the plate off of here so here first of all you can see where the the plates always been um, and you can see on the back that it's never had its lugs moved um, most you know if if the plate had been replaced you'd likely see extra holes here or here where the plate has been moved around so I know it's quite a basic um, piece of advice for many of our viewers but the first and most important thing to look for when buying pickle hobs is that it does not have extra holes. Um, the second thing that's most common with um, buying pickle hobs is replaced or repainted cockades. Um, quite often you see cockades where someone didn't have the right state so they'll strip the paint off and repaint it and it's always quite quite crudely done it does take a number of years to spot the um, the signs of original aged paint and also that um, people are making chin straps so you, you can see um, quite often fake chin straps with leather the best way to spot whether it's a uh, fake chin strap if you can still smell the leather then it's very likely to be a fake a fake chin strap um, they're the basic rules for for buying um, pickle halves. You know, when you get to the more complicated um, states, the, the rare estates, it's always best to consult your books to make sure that the stampings in the in the pickle halves, the stampings are quite often on the rear base here, the regimental stampings. You know, always check books. There's there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of good books out there um, that you can check to make sure you're buying the right things. That there's never any. You know, the best advice I can always give is buy, buy yourself a book and read up on the subject you're buying. Um, so that's my, just my quick rundown on, on things to look out for when buying pickle halves. I think the next one I'm going to do is, is um, SS caps. You know, there's a lot of people, new collectors, they love SS caps. And the, it's one of the first things they try and buy. So I've seen hundreds of people fall foul of um, buying fake SS caps. And there's lots of really basic... Um, things to point out and show you about buying SS caps. Most common one being where people have converted infantry caps into SS caps and I'll show you that in, my, in one of my next videos. The other thing um, I wanted to move on to to show you is, is, is a group that we've recently sold. Now some of you may have seen it on our website um, and it was it, it, we've just passed the anniversary of, of Arnhem and we had a medal group to one of the, um, the Arnhem veterans um, and it's, it's sold now, but it's about to be posted out to the customer. But I wanted to just show it to you um, before before it's sent out. So this group of medals uh, is relating to a soldier called Geoffrey Cocaine. He enlisted in the Royal Horse Artillery in December 1934. And in uh, January 1937, he joined the Royal Warwickshire Regiment. He volunteered for the commandos and trained in Scotland and moved to Dover, where he served in the unit known as the 111th Commando Unit. They were based in Canterbury. He um, first uh, served um, in France in 1941 on commando operations and he also fought in North Africa, in Italy um, in 1943 and he was also sent to Morocco and Tunisia and fought alongside the 8th Army in the invasion of Sicily. You know, as I said, we're coming up to the anniversary, well, we've just passed the anniversary of Arnhem and, and we you know, British British people were really proud of what our soldiers did at Arnhem, and, and to have medals from a guy that served there at Ar 
at Arnhem on, on Operation Market Garden is a really quite a special thing. And th this soldier, he he, he landed in Holland um, at uh, 1.28 uh, in the afternoon on September the, the 17th, 1944. He was captured on the Monday, the 24th of September by the Waffen SS near the church in Arnhem alongside all the famous faces you see in the movies such as A Bridge Too Far. He was captured at the end of the Arnhem operations and served as a prisoner of war in Hellinger, which was later liberated by the Russian Second Army. He was held for four months and handed over to the American forces, where, after which he made his way back to England via the American forces, and at that point he weighed under seven stone. Now, for our UK viewers, um, you'd understand seven stone is not, you know, he was very, very light. I don't know what that is in kilograms, but he was very emaciated. You know, we, we were really proud to have uh, a medal group um, related to someone at Arnhem, and, and we weren't surprised that this sold as quickly as it did. What I wanted to let you all know is that, yeah, I do have these uniforms here, but really that's really for the purpose of the video. The uniforms that we keep here are coming in and out of the office all the time for shows. So they go out of the office, they come back into the office, but um, that's just like a, t a temporary situation. We have a lot of uniform items, probably over three or four hundred uniform items. So they're not kept here in the office, but we do keep them in polythene bags. It's not that attractive for uh, a YouTube video. so. Hence why um, these ones are left just like this temporarily. We also use moth traps. Um, so these are sticky labels um, which trap the moths in there to protect the uniforms. It's probably the safest way to protect your items, but usually on an everyday basis, they're, they're trapped in there. Um, as you'll see later in the video, I, I love animals, but I, I don't love moths. Um, so, the best way to protect yourself from moths really is is movement and and fresh air so if you've got a collection of uniforms the best thing you can do is on a regular basis take your uniforms out of your collection room and just leave them out in the fresh air move them around daylight and you should be fine so now that i've declared my love for animals and my hatred for moths um, quite poignantly i wanted to lead on to talking about something quite sensitive which is um, happening here in the uk the UK government are um, really pushing for a ban on the use of ivory. Now, it's irrelevant to military and a lot of people don't know this. I, I'm actually vegan. I don't eat, eat or use any animal products at all. However, in my job with buying and selling military, I have to buy and sell items of old leather, like pickle halves, and often we come across swords, like Georgian swords, Napoleonic swords, which have ivory grips on their handles, such as this, you know, in carvings of ivory. This, this item dates back, you know, nearly 200 years. So the UK government are trying to get through a, a bill at the moment of a total ban, complete and total, absolute ban of the sale of ivory. Well, I fully agree with that. We have to protect the ivory, you know, the, 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 the we have to protect the, the animals, it's not even a doubt for me. I'm one of the strongest campaigners for animal rights. However, what the government have to understand is that these are items of historic importance. You know, some of these swords date back, you know, to, to during the Napoleonic War, you know, during the Battle of Trafalgar. The government aren't saying we have to destroy them, but they are saying that it will be illegal to sell them. Now, I wrote to my MP recently and basically got a get stuff letter back. So what I need our, my UK viewers to do is if you're passionate about your military history, write a letter to your MP asking them to consider the, um, the importance of, of historically valuable items when they're passing this bill on the ban of ivory because it's, it's totally unrealistic. All of these ivory items can be carbon tested, they can be carbon dated. We, we can prove when something is old ivory and when something is new ivory. So although for some of you viewers, um, you know, a Georgian sword might not be an important thing, they are lovely attractive things and they have such importance. So it's, you know, if you get time, please make the effort to write to your MP and um, try and push forward um, them to consider not a total ban of, of the use of ivory. So the last thing to mention in today's videos is um, 
my recent appearance on Combat Dealers. So in the UK here we have a channel called Quest, I think on Virgin or Cable it's channel 172 and on Sky it's channel 144. I was in an episode on Tuesday or Wednesday night, I can't remember. Usually the production company tell me in advance so I can do some publicity but it just so happened that I stumbled across the fact that the Dunkirk episode was on and so I didn't get time to do any promo. Bruce from Combat Dealers, he came here and we did some business together. It was a bit of fun, some good publicity. But you can go onto some um, media channels on, on your computer and watch the video on your, compu on your computer. Um, lastly, I just wanted to say we're getting a really good response from the YouTube channel. We've had over a thousand views of our Mac Show video. We're up to over uh, nearly 100 subscribers. So if you're watching, um, don't just like the video, make the effort to subscribe, it really does help us, um, you know, because it takes a lot of effort to make the videos and the more appreciation we get, the more willing we're, we're going to make more. So if you're enjoying the videos, please subscribe because that will encourage us to continue to make, make videos and, you know, down the line there'll be, there'll be tips and things that will benefit you as a collector. So um, keep watching, next video next week, or we're updating our um, website uh, tomorrow, Friday, so you're probably, we probably would have updated by the time you're watching this video. Get onto the website, we had a massive update, um, probably over 80 items. Um, a lot of them will sell very, very quickly, so the quicker you can get on there, the better it will be for you. We try and update the website around about 1 or 2 o'clock on a Friday, um, UK time. So, you know, do your best and we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you soon.